I've wanted to do a ridiculously loud whistle all my life since seeing New Yorkers hail cabs in movies and when people go nuts when someone gets some form of ball into some form of net. So I'm finally going to do it. So my aim is to first learn the two-handed whistle and then the one-handed cab hailer whistle. I came across these scales of decibels that show how loud things are in the world and also the range of noises that it's actually safe for humans to actually experience. So obviously I want these whistles to be louder than my normal whistle, but I also want to just see how loud I can actually get. I've got an aim to get into these red areas just to see if my whistle could ever actually become dangerous. Okay, so I've got this decibel app on my phone that I'm going to measure the whistles with. So for a baseline, I first want to just see what my normal whistle is even at. I'm going to set myself up about a foot and a half away just so that the actual air that's coming out of my mouth doesn't affect the microphone. This is pretty good. All right, here we go. All right, that was topping out at around 80-ish. Respectable and is already apparently as loud as a truck that isn't exactly anything dangerous. Okay, so in a second, you're gonna realize that I actually started making this video a little while ago because to get to the start of this experiment, we're gonna have to go back in time about one significant haircut ago. But first, let's talk about the technique, because I forgot to film this part back then. After doing a bit of initial research, I found out that the technique for the two-hand whistle is actually pretty simple and breaks down into four key parts. With each hand, you're going to want to create these pistol shapes and push them together. And the eagle-eyed out there will notice we've just created the letter A. And this is the vital shape, by the way. Next, you need to wet your lips and then make grandpa lips. You know, like pretending you don't have any teeth. And then you combine all that and use that A shape to push the tip of your tongue back over itself whilst those nice wet grandpa lips seal up around it. And then you're just supposed to to blow air out. At least that's how simple I thought it would be one haircut ago. All right, day one, attempt one. I was feeling confident. I knew the basic technique. I made the A shape and the grandpa lips. It was time to give it a go. Yeah, pretty much went how you'd expect. So practice montage. And after five minutes of solid practice, I made no progress. And it actually really started to hurt. So I took a quick break and then got back to it. And this time, after trying for a few more minutes, I started hearing something. <laughs> but the problem is, after about half an hour of trying, I was still just getting this. Oh man. So yeah, clearly I was doing something very wrong, but there was no way that I was gonna get from this to this without just a bunch more practicing and a bunch more experimenting. <sighs> and with some more practice, even though it was still sounding pretty pathetic, I was eventually starting to get louder. Whoa! I am getting so much better which caused a new problem. It really hurt my ears. So to actually keep trying, I needed to chuck on noise cancelling headphones. For the next couple of days, I practiced whenever and wherever I could, but progress was slow and it still wasn't even close to sounding right. And this is when I came across a tip that led to a massive discovery. The tip is to use a mirror and then look at yourself whilst you make changes to your like mouth shape and your finger orientation and all of that good stuff. So then if you do make a change and it actually has an impact, you can see exactly what you did and then just repeat it. So I got the mirror out and gave it a go. And after moving my tongue and my chin and my fingers around for a good like 25 minutes, something happened. Something's changed. One thing, I changed one thing. Okay, so this whistle might not sound like much, but after discovering this one specific tweak, I tried again and... Okay. <sighs> what? And my mind is blown. Okay. Here's the magic sauce that changed everything for me. I realized that it's like when you create a little opening on top of a beer bottle and create a train noise. 
This works by turning the bottle into a resonance chamber, I think. But with your mouth, the resonance chamber is the space between the folded tongue and your lower jaw. And instead of the opening created by your thumbs on the lip of the bottle, with the mouth whistle, the opening is created with the A shape of your two hands. And you can genuinely feel the vibrations in a similar way when you do both. Which meant I could now do this. Okay, we're back one haircut later in the present day. It's now actually been about a month since I learned the two-handed whistle. So I think it's about time that I learned the proper taxi whistle so that I can hail a cab with one hand whilst doing other important stuff like holding a banana or a boomerang or a beer or even all three with the other hand. I've got a feeling that this is going to be pretty easy seeing as I have already learned this one. <sighs> yep, still really hurts the ears. I think I'm going to be needing these bad boys again. So the concept is the same, except instead of making an A shape with two hands, you make an OK symbol like this. Got him. But the important part is that you're still making an A shape with your thumb and index finger. So this is attempt number one. Shh. Shh. Ah, sh okay, I guess this is going to be harder than I thought. Okay, I feel like I'm getting somewhere, but it's just not feeling like that whole beer bottle analogy like before. <sighs> Literally within seconds, I'm already hearing something that sounds closer to what the whistle should sound like. <sighs> and just as I was thinking this might actually take me ages, I gave it one more go. I think I might have it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes! I've got it! Come on! All right, okay, 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 okay. Let me just make sure that I know what's, what's going on here. It's so good, oh my God. Okay, I know exactly what's happening. Let me show you. Okay, so when I learned this with two hands and I was doing the grandpa lips, the top and the bottom lip were basically as tight as each other. But with this one, in front of the mirror, I just tried doing two simple things. I moved my chin forward a tiny bit more and then I let my lower lip go kind of floppy. Yeah, I kind of let my lower lip go floppy. I guess that just helps to close the gap around the fingers when there are less fingers in my mouth. Jesus, this whole video sounds so weird. So I'm not 100% sure what the lip flop does, but with the lip flop, <laughs> yep, nailed it, come on. All right, so we already know that this hurts my ears, but let's see how loud they actually are. Decibel app running, headphones on. Okay, two-handed whistle first. And remember, my aim is over 100. I wanna be causing some hearing damage. Oh my God, that wasn't even a good whistle. Oh my God, that is so loud. All right, now how loud can I call for a taxi? Oh my God, that was like 110. I'm louder than a helicopter. So if I were to be whistling next to somebody, it's somewhere between like 15 minutes and 15 seconds and I would cause hearing damage. 110 decibels is an immediate cause of hearing loss. What? Well, there you have it. I can cause immediate hearing loss with my hands. That's crazy. I'm scaring myself. So next, I need to go to hospital because I reckon I need to learn an iconic whistle. Barbie. 